If you caught the last three videos in this retrospective, there's a good chance you're left with a few bullet points. 1. Stalker is the most innovative and ahead of its time video game series in recent memory, and 2. It has an incredibly strong modding community that keeps all three games in steady rotation to this day. And you know, working on a full series retrospective for these games can be a little hard. The mods for Stalker can be flat out incredible and there's a constant pressure to cover a few of them, but then the question becomes, well, which ones, and more importantly, which ones do I not cover? If you choose Misery, people are going to ask why you didn't include Gunslinger, and if you decide on Complete, well, they're going to wonder why the hell you didn't touch on Lost Alpha. So it becomes a game of either racking your brain trying to come up with one that'll please everyone, which is impossible, or you just submit yourself to covering all of them, aka saying goodbye to your free time and accepting that the next five or six years are going to be filled with wall-to-wall -wall stalker mods. For a long time, if you were going to talk about Stalker Online, this little conundrum would come up in one way or another. But then Call of Chernobyl came out, the Stalker mod to end all Stalker mods. This landmark project included all of the content from all three releases and stuffed it inside a single package. Truly an impressive feat of craftsmanship if there ever was one. And for a long time, ZOC was the gold standard in this little scene. That is, until the release of something that would take a perfect concept and somehow further perfect it. Oh, and it's free too. Interested yet? If not, trust me, you will be. Stalkers, welcome to the zone. Stalker Anomaly is, and I'm not going to mince words here, fucking amazing. What you're looking at is the original intent GSC Game World had when starting this franchise, but thanks to budget, time, and other concerns, they never quite achieved. But I'm sure at least a few of you are wondering, what the hell does that mean? Basically, this mod is a combination of every location, item, NPC, mechanic, and concept ever seen in an officially released Stalker title wrapped into one package with a whole lot of additions. In fact, there's so much new to talk about here, this might end up being a pretty short video. Because my only options are to either cover every single tweak this mod has made and resign myself to the process of making an 8.5 hour video, or gloss over some things and make sure I still have a wife after this project. Anomaly is set just a little bit after the official events in the Stalker timeline in round about 2018, so that means Strelok has already made his way to the center three times and as a result, we have a very different zone from a veteran's perspective. You take on the role of… well, whatever you want, really. The idea is for you to formulate your own reasons for coming here. It seems like the only thing the team behind Anomaly are providing you with is a bunch of stuff to do once you figure all that out. You can start a new game belonging to literally any faction you want, which only causes one small conflict since Clear Sky was supposed to have been totally wiped out after the events of the second game. Of course, those guys do pride themselves on keeping their existence hidden, so that doesn't exactly require a lot of suspension of disbelief to accept. When you do decide on the faction you want to join, you have an absolutely staggering amount of options to figure out before you pop out your first detector and go artifact hunting. My favorite, and the one I recommend you go for, is Story Mode, which has three separate quest lines to check out. And I would love to tell you how much content that equals out to, but for reasons we'll discuss later, I've yet to even see the ending of the first one, despite dedicating some serious time to it over the last two weeks. If you're feeling like adding a bit of roguelike to your stalker experience, you can start up a game in Azazel mode, which has you inhabiting a random stalker's body every time you die. The cool part being that this will be an actual stalker that exists in your game. So there's a non-zero chance you might have already come across this person and now you have to pick your progress back up with all of their gear. I would only recommend this game mode for absolute psychopaths, which basically means anyone who's put more than 100 hours into a stalker game. There's a survival mode, which will have zombies spawning in at increasing intervals, the goal being to see how long you can make it until the zombie horde eventually takes out everything and everyone. 
There's also an option that applies to all of those modes that has parts of the zone only opening up once you've physically found a route there or talked to someone who has. Then there's the Warfare option that'll have the zone's factions acting a little more dynamically and with a bit more freedom than usual. That means strongholds can be taken over at any point and you can play a role in who owns what if you want to. This mode makes the hectic randomness of the zone even more insane, a feat I used to think was impossible. And speaking of sanity, if you have little to no value for your own, you can enable Iron Man mode which will delete all of your saves upon death. Honestly, I get irrationally pissed off just thinking about the idea of checking this box. There's also a campfire mode which is a mechanic fresh out of the Souls titles. In this mode, you won't be able to save your game unless you come across an area where a campfire can be lit. You know those people who like to dress up in leather, whip each other, and stick hooks in their back? Well, this is the stalker equivalent of that. Then there's the aptly titled Agony Mode, which only lets you save your game when you're not injured, irradiated, in combat, and most importantly, not in the middle of an emission. So there's no doubt you've got a lot to consider here when starting a new game, but personally, I would recommend, if this is your first time, don't mess with any of these minus the story mode. Trust me on that. Before you start, you can select a portrait and your starting area. Obviously, that's going to be decided by your chosen faction, and you guys know me, I'm a loner through and through, so I always choose Corden because I am a slave to nostalgia. Here in the middle of the screen, you'll see what the game begrudgingly gives you for free as far as your inventory goes, and next to it are the items you can add to that inventory. Each gun, box of ammo, and med pack has a point value assigned to it, and you have a very finite pool of points to spend, so choose wisely. And for those of you who have noticed, yes, I am using a mod on top of this mod, and yes, we will most definitely talk about that in due time. Once you've properly geared up, you'll spawn in at your chosen location, and the hunt for whatever you're looking for begins. If you chose to start at Corden like I did, there's a sort of newbie initiation quest line, and it's something I would recommend you go through even if you're already well versed in the Stalker series because it'll give you some tips on the new mechanics. Plus, and most importantly, the quest giver will hand over a good amount of ammo for your chosen weapons and an artifact container. An item that fits so well into these games, I'm almost positive it was a planned feature in the originals. As most of us already know, artifacts created in the zone tend to retain varying levels of radiation, but for whatever reason, that radiation only ever affected you when that artifact was equipped. Well, this game takes that idea just a little bit further into realism by having those artifacts irradiate you while they're just sitting in your inventory. So you get one of these lead-lined boxes, which will keep them from burning a hole through your pack, or more importantly, you. There's also smaller versions of these boxes that'll let you negate a single artifact's radiation while still equipping it to your belt, and I think that's a great little microcosm of what you can expect to find in this game. Everything that was just given to you in the series proper now has to be fought for tooth and nail. Thought it was kinda hard dealing with all the dangers of the zone on top of needing to eat in the originals? Well, now you need to make sure you get enough sleep and drink enough water as well. Was finding artifacts fun before? Well, now you need to make sure your detector has an up-to-date database of artifacts in it, otherwise you could be standing on top of one and you would never know. Anomalies are now one or two hit instant kills unless you've got some amazing resistance built into your gear and the firefights. Jesus, don't even get me started on these firefights. Like I've said about a million times before, in the original Stalker games, I always approach combat from a long distance perspective. I like taking pot shots from afar, thus lowering my chances of getting caught by a stray bullet. But here in Anomaly, it doesn't really matter how you approach a shootout. If you're not utilizing cover properly or exposing yourself too much to line up a shot, you'll be dead before you're even able to figure out who it was that shot you. I know this sounds like some kind of hyperbole or exaggeration, but no joke, early on in a run of Anomaly, I found it was actually a welcome upside when I would die to what seems like random gunfire but could actually see the person who killed me. And I think this is a good time to mention why this might look so different for people used to Vanilla Anomaly. I'm practicing a little modception by using Provac's Weapon Overhaul, something that I feel really elevates the gunplay in this game to something that's mostly fun but sometimes totally unfair. 
On top of that, it changes the game's look by adding new environmental effects, character models, and a nearly infinite list of alterations. In some ways, these can be downsides for purists, like the 3D models look very different, and they increased the overall contrast of the game and added some odd shading around those 3D models, but the second you start hearing the crackle of far-off gunfire, or get into one of those fights yourself, you will be glad you applied it, I promise. From the start, run-of-the-mill bandits and mercs will have the same access to high-power weaponry that you do, and they will not be afraid to use it, so any fight you find yourself in will become a genuine life-or-death scenario. With this add-on, shootouts become this amazing white-knuckle experience, and it'll only take you one or two deaths coming from some unseen enemy till you start really learning the value of good cover and checking your surroundings often. Like you'd imagine, given the name, this weapon overhaul comes with a shit ton of new firearms to try out, but to be honest, at this point, it's a bit ridiculous. I mean, yeah, it is cool having so many choices, but realistically, there's maybe five or six guns that are worth using in each category. If that. Don't get me wrong, I really do respect the painstaking dedication they had towards making these pew pews more true to life, but I don't think it was necessary to include nearly every bolt-action rifle put into production during World Wars 1 and 2. On top of that, it seems like some of these guns maybe were taken from other projects or worked on by other people. Sometimes I would come across a great weapon and put an ACOG scope on it, but it would act differently than the last few guns I tried it on. Which is a little hard to explain, so let me try. Some firearms use your more traditional method of looking down a scope by blacking out the rest of your view, but some of them only slightly zoom into the scope's view while blurring your peripheral sight. Which would be pretty easy enough to get used to if it was consistent within the game, but I often found that the same scope would act differently depending on what gun I mounted it to. On top of that, some scopes will render your view at a different frame rate than what you're running the game at. And like you'd imagine, going from 100 FPS to around 30 with a click of a mouse button can be really disorienting. It may be hard to tell since this video is going to be compressed down to 60 FPS anyways, but trust me, it is jarring as hell. This caused me to pass up a great rifle or shotgun a few times because I knew I'd either have to get used to tracking a target at a severely compromised frame rate or just rely on iron sights for very long range shots, neither being a good option in the zone. Oh, and some guns won't work with some scopes, so for example, you might find an EOTech LED scope will render its reticle outside of its 3D model when attached to certain weapons. Which really sucks, but is kind of to be expected for an add-on released by a bunch of people who aren't getting paid. I also found that some guns use very low frame rate animations, so reloading and running with your gun out might seem very choppy. This messed me up because I kept thinking the game itself was slowing down, then I'd move my mouse around to change my view and everything would be fine. Which, yes, is very disorienting, but realistically, this only happens with a very small percentage of the weapons on offer here, so that's okay, and again, a bunch of people not getting paid here. Continuing with the downsides, mutants in this mod are an absolute force of nature. The boars in Cordon can kill you in one or two hits, which wouldn't be so much of a big deal if that wasn't the starting point most people will find themselves in in the very beginning of the game. Even when you tweak the trader economy and the options, it's going to be a good long while till you can afford armor that'll stand up to that kind of abuse, and even when you do, it's going to cost you a majority of your cash every time you take a hit from these assholes since you're going to need to find a technician to service your tattered armor. I mean, don't get me wrong, a round of 5.56 flying through the air will have a similar effect, but at least bandits aren't out here breaking the land speed record and jumping at me from 20 feet away. Thanks to this, I had to tweak the game to almost never spawn mutants, which is a real shame because dealing with mutants is sort of a key part of this series. To be honest though, it seems to me the real focus with most stalker mods is to further emphasize the human-on-human -human violence and let the mutants act as mobile anomalies, just hazards you'll need to avoid most of the time. If possible, I'd love to try out an add-on one day that balanced the mutants so that fighting them would be just as satisfying as shooting it out with NPCs. And speaking of NPCs, I loved how they took the radio callouts from Clear Sky and made them into the stalker equivalent of Twitter. Every little thing that goes down in the area you're in will likely be noticed by someone, and they'll radio everyone else on an open channel if it's worth talking about. So if you're in the middle of a shootout, you might see other stalkers saying they heard rifle fire near the cement factory or something like that. 
they always include a location and sometimes they'll even accurately identify what kind of weapon you're using just from the sound it makes. The cool thing is they do this for everyone, not just you, which can come in real handy before you get your hands on an upgraded PDA that tracks groups of stalkers. So in the early game, if you hear about monolith fighters shooting it out with a squad of duty members, you can either steer clear of that area or just wait a bit and try to loot the corpses. That is, of course, if someone hasn't already beat you to the punch. But I imagine some of you guys caught that last part where I said I tweaked the game in the options, and yes, that is one of the absolute best features Anomaly has to offer. You know, other than the whole it being free thing. If you go into the options menu, you'll find some kind of modifier for just about any system or mechanic you could think of. Everything from how much money your loot sells for to how tall the grass is. Hell, you can even control the moon cycles or how often you see cloudy weather. Almost every part of the game can be messed with here, and if I were you, I'd start a new game, fiddle with the options till you find a sweet spot that works for you, then start over for a serious run. And I say that because that's exactly what I had to do. On my first try, I got to the Agriprom underground and found myself completely out of ammo and healing supplies, but too far from a merchant or technician who could help me with that. Of course, I later found out you can fast travel just by right-clicking on a landmark you've already discovered, so we'll just call that a few hours of my life I'll never get back. If you do end up in some kind of an unwinnable situation, there is a debug menu that'll let you further modify things by spawning in items or NPCs, activating god mode, start or stopping storms, changing the time of day, and just about every other single thing you could imagine, so don't let my horror stories get you too discouraged, because you do have a nuclear option if you need to use it. I say that because, well, there's no getting around it, this is a massively difficult game, even on the easiest setting, but the devs seem to have put a lot of effort into letting you control just how hard it hits you, and I think that's an important point. This mod was specifically made to be incredibly challenging. Remember how I told you you need to learn how to play the Stalker series? Well, if this was a school setting, Stalker would be 4th grade science and Anomaly would be some kind of college level microbiology course. Knowing how Stalker works will certainly help you, but in the end you'll need to learn Anomaly's ins and outs before it really opens up to you. About 4 or 5 hours in I finally found my groove and figured out how to do well, and at that point I literally could not put this game down. As I write this, I might have a good 60 or 70 hours invested, and like I said before, most of that didn't even go into completing the story quest. I've just been exploring the zone and immersing myself in this world. I think I really started falling in love with Anomaly once I stopped trying to play Stalker and just let myself learn all the new systems and mechanics it brings to the table. So yes, expect to have your ass beat into the ground if you're not used to these kind of games, like myself. But trust me when I say you will eventually get to a point where you couldn't stop playing Anomaly even if you tried. And speaking of Stalker, if you're a veteran to this series, you might be wondering, well, what's here that I haven't seen before? And the answer to that is an absolute shit ton. Any map seen in any release of Stalker so far has been stitched together for Anomaly, but there's a butt ton more. Some of these I was already able to explore in my previous favorite Stalker full conversion mod, Call of Chernobyl, but others are brand new to me. These new areas are killer to check out, and the level of detail-driven design feels about on par with what was officially released, but if I'm being honest, I was actually more of a fan of the alterations made to the maps I was already familiar with. All over the place you'll see slight additions or outright changes to your favorite landscapes. For example, Yantar is covered in vegetation that helps it not feel so empty around the research base, and the great swamps from Clear Sky are almost unrecognizable in the very best kind of way. The water looks amazing and the plant life is lush and ominous at the same time. One of the atmosphere-driven mods I'm using changes how the zone's trees and bushes act with them swaying all over, and I'll admit this looks incredible to me. It adds to the living breathing feeling I get from this setting, but I am frequently taken out of that experience when they continue to sway around even when there's no breeze at all. On the plus side though, running through a wooded area at night during a storm is so damn cool it's worth suffering a little bit of jank. Speaking of nighttime, most stalkers know that their reticle will turn red when mousing over any threats, which used to be a great mechanic for cheesing the game. See, back in vanilla, you could just move your reticle around in the darkness and pop some poor bandit before he even knew you were there because you didn't need a flashlight to see him. 
Well, an anomaly, your reticle darkens with the environment, so that tactic no longer works, and I think that shows that the people who made this were true stalkers through and through. Speaking of which, the guys behind this mod also added traders and technicians and strategic outposts all over the zone, which does help with the sometimes extreme difficulty of getting from point A to B. And when you use those technicians, you might also notice a new mechanic that'll let you collect crafting components in order to upgrade your firearms instead of paying an arm and a leg for someone to do it for you. I didn't mess with this too much myself, but this feels like it fits right in with the stalker mindset, so I am a fan. The same thing goes for repairing gear, which means you'll come across a lot of junk items on a run if you're like me and don't engage with these new additions so much. On the plus side though, all of these items sell for enough of a prize that it's worth carting them around, so problem solved. Truth be told though, I'm a little hesitant to keep talking about new tweaks added to Anomaly because I really don't know much about them in general. Everything I've told you so far has been learned through exploration and intuition, and I sort of want to keep it that way. There are a million and one new mechanics and elements to mess with, and me not knowing much about them sort of mirrors that feeling that got me interested in this series in the first place. I truly loved not knowing where the hell I was, what I was doing, or how the hell I would go about doing it, and I think I might have ruined a bit of that for myself by obsessively seeking out information on everything even remotely related to Stalker. As it is now, Anomaly gives me that same mysterious feeling, and I really don't want to speed up that feeling wearing off. I'm sure eventually I'll wrap my head around most of these things, but when I do it'll be because I figured it out myself and not because I spent a few nights looking through wiki pages. Although if I'm being honest, it's really hard to fight the urge not to do that. For example, every once in a while there's this crazy loud crash and the area lights up like some kind of a localized lightning storm. In the dead center, whether that be 80 feet in the air or on the ground right in front of you, a sphere of light appears and I'll be damned if I even have a clue as to what that is or what it does. This being a stalker game, I just sort of assumed it would lead to a violent death, so anytime one of these things show up, I book it in the opposite direction. And speaking of getting the hell out of there, there's also a new type of emission in the form of a psi storm. I have no idea what it is or where it comes from, but I'm sure we can all assume the origin is some sort of cosmic horror beyond our comprehension, or maybe some busted experimental Soviet tech. You know, either or. Alright, look guys, like I told you at the start, I'm either going to have to cut this one short or spend the next few years of my life producing this one video, and in the spirit of giving you a first experience similar to mine, I'll stop explaining things here. So instead, let's move on to my recommendation, and that's a complicated matter. First off, on the simple side of things, if you are a Stalker fan, you owe it to yourself to get this thing right now. More than likely, you're already going to have Anomaly installed, but if not, trust me, you want to get that way real quick. This is what I would like to call the true stalker experience, not necessarily because it's any better than the originals, but because it stays so true to them. The spirit and intent behind these games remains unaltered even when such wide changes are applied, so if you've ever picked up a stalker game and thought to yourself, damn, I wish I could get more of that, well, this mod right here is what you were wishing for. As for the newcomers in the audience, which I sort of expect to be a majority of you, I would still recommend jumping in, but do so knowing full well that this game will fight you nearly every step of the way until you figure it out. This game is unintuitive, punishingly difficult, and almost malicious with how it treats you, but when you get over that initial learning curve, you'll find one of the most rewarding and immersive gaming experiences you can possibly have. I know it's kind of dumb saying something like that when none of us can really predict how much the medium will improve with time, but I truly can't imagine a scenario where something delivers this much content in such a massively satisfying way. I know I've said this before in this retrospective, but this is really something special. Sure, Anomaly itself is a marvel of programming genius, and I couldn't even imagine the tons of digital duct tape it took to get the X-Ray engine acting this stably. But it wouldn't exist if there weren't three amazing video games for it to use as a foundation. If Stalker is the most immersive game in existence, and I very much think it is, Stalker Anomaly is the most immersive game in existence plus one. It's everything you like about Stalker, along with anything you might have ever wished for while playing it. Of course, there are some serious downsides to consider as well. Like I keep bitching about, this game will knock your teeth out if you let it. Progress in the zone is slow to make, and you're always just a single report of gunfire away from losing that progress. On top of that, and this should go without saying, but it can be very buggy. 
I ran into a story mission very early on that refused to mark itself as completed, and I'm not sure if the next story mission I had on my PDA was for the same quest line or one of the other two. Well, I guess it's a good thing I'll likely be playing this game till the day I die anyways. Other than the aforementioned issues though, this is a hefty download on its own, and when you factor in the Mammoth Provac weapon overhaul and a single atmospheric mod, you're looking at an install folder that weighs in at a staggering 95 gigs. But to temper that problem, and really any issue we've had so far, both Anomaly and Provax Overhaul are totally free. I genuinely have no idea how GSC Game World hasn't already taken down this project for essentially redistributing their creative work, but let's thank our lucky stars they haven't, because without a shred of doubt in my mind, this is the stalker concept perfected. That being said, I'll include a link to Anomaly in the description, along with Provax Weapon add-on, which I also very much recommend. Trust me, this combination is something you need to see for yourself before you truly understand how amazing it is. Sure, watching footage from online content creators can give you a glimpse at what's on offer here, but I can assure you it is only a single digit percentage of the experience you could be having. To put it succinctly, Stalker Anomaly has consumed my life these last few weeks, and I think there's a good chance it'll have the same effect on you. If it seems far too difficult for you at first, don't worry, that's normal, but don't be too afraid to start tweaking it to your likings in the options menu. It's what I did, and I don't think any stalker worth his weight in artifacts would look down on you for ensuring you have as good a time with this game as you possibly can. So please, stop listening to my rambling and get your ass over to ModDB right now. You owe it to yourself to experience the perfect distillation of everything we love about these games. And with that, I'm gonna need to hit the road. We're headed to Moscow next, I just hope nothing crazy like, I don't know, a global nuclear war happens by the time we get there. So here's hoping I see all of you safely make it to the other side of the exclusion zone. Good hunting, stalkers. Hey fellow crazy people, thanks so much for letting me vent about how much I love this series for about 4 videos now. If these incoherent rants are your kind of content, I have my Patreon linked here on screen. Support from viewers is how I keep all this afloat, and I would more than appreciate any kind of help you're willing to give. Of course, there's also the YouTube membership program, and the equally valuable like and comments as well. I'm where I am today because of people both past and present who were kind enough to lend me their help, and I'll tell you, I'm nowhere near done expressing myself with these videos yet. So a big thanks to all of you for just stopping in for this weird ride and everyone who's ever helped me out. I'll see you guys later. Much love.